And I will um, dive into one in particular, and that's biotech, DNA. But before that, I'll give you a, a big picture overview, some um, thoughts about singularity in healthcare, and then the latest DNA-based startups across the globe that might change the world. So a few people that have inspired me in the past, and still do, uh, John Hagel from McKinsey. If you want to increase serendipity, you have to increase your vulnerability. Think about Twitter, you share stuff about yourself, but you, you get more stuff in return. Never mistake a clear view for a short distance. That means you can have an amazing vision, but it might take more time than you think. Technological evolution is about increasing the possibility space and choices for all of us. That's very important why Kevin Kelly told us that. that because the biotech revolution will increase options as well. It's very controversial, but it, it will be here and real soon. And finally, be the change you want to see in the world. I've seen many can uh, cancer uh, cases in my personal uh, life in the last three years. So that was a real purpose for me to dive into this space and make, this, make, make change happen. So the big picture. We see four cycles based on Thomas Friedman uh, of globalization that is about knowledge uh, creation and distrib distribution. First religion, then nations, the golden age of Holland, for example, then multinationals in the last 200 years. And right now, since the year 2000, we see decentralization, increasing power of individu individuals and social networks and groups. Why? Because of internet social media, mobile, smartphones, mobile science, sensors, but also DNA profiles, neuro profiles, nanotechnology, and also decentralized solar energy, do it yourself, and 3D printers. So you, soon you can print anything you want or almost anything by yourself at home. And that's not far off, I'll explain later. So people are become mainly because of mobile right now, but it will change, more like wolves, more biological, impulsive, uh, authentic, in the now, real time, real time marketing, real time organizations. But that will change. We are living in real time right now, real time data, but we will be become more aware of our own past and our own future and our shared future and past because of DNA. Let's look at the evolution, increasing transparency and openness. We all know that, especially here, we are all innovators. And there's a logic to it, there's a logic. The logic is we go from the external environment slowly towards our internal bodies, meaning our DNA or DNA and neuro profiles. And the intermediary step is right now. It's a quantified self. Thomas talked about it. That's a very big movement already across the globe. Small, but ex exponential. Think about the talk by uh, Russell before me. So this is an interface between external environment and our internal body. And then we go, we move beyond. It's a logic. There's a logic here. So what do we do? If you look at technological evolution, especially the last 20 years or maybe even 50, we make the implicit explicit, the invisible visible. That's the essence of technology. And because we make stuff in our environment and now inside our bodies explicit, we can optimize it, manage it to a certain degree, of course. There will always be risks involved. So we make it visible and then we share it. We make it social. And then we recreate planned serendipity. That means positive outcomes, positive coincidences. We intensify those by sharing stuff and data. So singularity. Russell gave a good uh, introduction. It's basically a convergence of different emerging technologies beyond mobile. Biotech, nanotech, neurotech, AI, robotics, space, energy, brain-computer interfaces, and how they all intertwine. And they are already here, as William Gibson said, but just right now mainly for the uh, innovators across the globe. But it's spreading rapidly. This is quite obvious based on the talk by Russell. It's exponential. We have been trained to think linear and local because of evolution. But right now, we have to think global 
and exponential. That's, that's different. That's really different and hard for us. So this needs a bit more <laughs> explanation, but here you see all the singularity technologies like nanotechnology, space, energy. We are right here in this year, 2011. Here is biotech. So what you see, if you move down here, this is the year 2025. This is between 2015 and 2025, the roadmap. And here you see the, the roadmap for the next five years. So what you see in this circle here is that the biotech will be, become mainstream in the next five years. That's key. Together with mobile internet, internet of things, sensors. So those two technologies are key within singularity on the short term. That means within biotech, that means uh, stem cell research, DNA writing, synthetic biology, uh, DNA profiling, that's what I will explain later on, uh, DNA-based drugs and biomimicry, for example. Okay, healthcare. So if we apply all the technology for singularity to healthcare, we see this. And healthcare is really important. Why? It's the, one of the biggest markets in the next 20 years, together with education. A lot of change is, is needed. So it means quantify self, meet all the body monitoring sensors and devices. But also robots, nanomedicine, also connected health, artificial intelligence, what, using Watson for healthcare purposes, for diagnostics. But also ne neuroscience, one, one, one example. Um, I was at FutureMed, Singularity University, one month ago. There was a talk by uh, Philip Lowe. He's a partner of Ed Boyden at MIT. He's one of the best scientists in the world, in my view. He's doing brain upload and downloading uh, downloads in the future using optogenetics or synthetic neurobiology. So that means he can manipulate individual neurons, neurons already using light, laser light. So you can make neuron activity digital, a zero or a one, on or off. And if you can digitize uh, your brain activity on a, on a neural level, neuron level, you can do the brain uploads in theory. But it will happen probably in the next 10 to 15, year, 15 years. Okay, that's another technology, just, just a small um, 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 uh, drop, drop uh, note, side note. So we make the invisible again visible using DNA, for example, but also singularity technologies. We make brain activity visible and shareable. So healthcare is about this section right now. That's, that doesn't make sense. We only focus on patients who are too late into the process. Cost a lot of money, less result, more deaf people. So we have to move to the left. How do we do that? Thomas talked about it. He talked about um, um, different things, sensors, data, evidence, relevance, consequences, and action. Great model, I totally agree. But in his fantastic book last year, Thomas wrote about the four Ps of the new healthcare paradigm. Prevention, prediction based on data, participation co-creation between patients and doctors but also personalization, personalized medicine, mainly driven by your personal DNA profile. Fantastic book, Decision Tree, read it, by Thomas, and highly recommend it. Um, and related to that, a few key new startups from the Silicon Valley Singularity University are Massive Health, Scanadu, Runkeeper, Fitbit, Zio, WeThinks, and Basis. Those are all quantified self startups that uh, monitor your yeah, body. And the first three ones are the integrative API or integrative solution providers. So they integrate all the feeds from the different individual quantified self solution providers, like WeThinks uh, and, and Fitbit. So we have all those sensors. We can monitor heart rate, cholesterol, glucose, anything. So what happens is crowdsourced health data. So we can use our individual health data and sharing it, aggregating it, making it anonymous. We can use it for scientific purposes. That's really important. Think SETI, SETI at home. But then for healthcare, using mobile devices. It's already happening. And also, you, you can measure your glucose using your iPhone with an add-on device. 
Lots of examples here. Also, attach a microscope to your mobile device for medical purposes. So if you combine it all, you see the small evolution in quantified self. First, you have point solutions like weight management for one keeper or weed things. Then you have a point solution for sleep, like sleep cycle or ZO or a neurovigil, and stress, pain, diabetes, etc. So in the next two years, all those point solutions will integrate into holistic solutions like Massive Health or Scanadu or Runkeeper. And it will, all, it will, it will not only focus about on uh, improving health when you are sick, but also improving wellness and doing, using all those sensors for the different use cases like dating or security. So we expect more than one million apps. This is a slide by uh, Astra Teller from Google. Explosion of M Health. So now about DNA, the main point here. This is the most important slide of the whole presentation in my view. Right here you see the reading of DNA, the, the speed of progress, meaning the cost of reading DNA per base pair. It's a unit for uh, within biotech, just like bits in, uh, in IT. So what you see down here, in the last, let's say, five to six years, there has been a five to ten a uh, ten-fold uh, increase every year in biotech, in the reading DNA. If you compare that to Moore's law, so the doubling of capacity every 12 or 18 months of storage, bandwidth, processor power, that's a five times increase, or it's a five times faster than Moore's law every year. So in five years' time, that's a huge difference between biotech speed and Moore's law, IT speed. This means if you read a human DNA profile 10 years ago, it was, let's say, around 3 billion. It took 13 years. Now it takes one or two days for $5,000. And it will go down to zero in the next seven years, based on feedback from the CTO of Pacific Bioscience, one of the market leaders, leaders in the world about DNA reading, sequencing. So in seven years, we all have a free DNA profile. That's not a fact, but a very solid prediction. It will happen. This line will continue, probably slower, but it will continue. And the yellow line is writing DNA. So it's not only about reading DNA or downloading, but also uploading, writing stuff. That's going slower, but still it's making progress. It's more in line with Moore's law. Here's an example of people who are working on uh, writing DNA, gene, gene synthesis, synthetic biology. It's an explosion field across the globe. Um, so this is company is called DNA 2.0. If you are interested, you can look into it and look at also companies like Gene Compiler or Gene Weave Bioscience or no, a lot of companies there. So biology becomes bioinformatics, becomes more digital. It's a technology. There's a great book about it. Biology is technology, written by Rob Carlson. Highly recommend it. If you want to know more about biology is uh, similar to IT or to our own mobile revolution or internet revolution, read this book, Biology is Technology. So these are the companies we all know or maybe have heard about. They read our DNA, parts of our DNA, of course, because it's less than 1% of the whole DNA profile. So you can buy the, your own DNA profile for 100 bucks or 500 bucks, depending on the vendor. I did it myself. It's a life-changing experience. At least it was to me and many other people. It's still very small. A few hundred thousand people have their own DNA profile, but it will in increase because the price point will drop. So it will, go, it will probably be around 20 to 30 million in the next five years. So you have more data, more DNA profiles. So you see more patterns, more insights, more granularity of insights, more accuracy, more be better predictions. That's the, that's the roadmap ahead. And these companies make this happen. This is the next wave of, of uh, DNA sequencing companies across the globe. They make, is it, make it happen that we have a zero uh, cost DNA profile soon. So the pessimistic scenario is this. You jump into the water, it's scary. Why? Because you, you look too much at those mov movies like this. It's a good movie. Who knows about Gattaca? Okay, most people, okay, great, let's say half. It's a very simplistic Frankenstein-like Frankenstein movie about biotech. It has some very good valid points and questions, 
but it's a, a negative uh, story only, and that's a shame in my view. Of course, biotech will have huge consequences in terms of, in terms of psychology, sociological impact, uh, ethical, legal. But we have to open up this, the discussion together. Optimistically, I would say there's a big light coming. The light makes the implicit explicit. It's about our own DNA profile. Half of all our capabilities, on average, is driven by our, our DNA. Intelligence, personality type, your diseases, your talents, your passions, emotional state, your moods. That's based on uh, input by Matt Ridley, Richard Dawkins, Stephen Pinker. So it's validated information. That's a lot of information that can bring light into our, our lives. So you have your DNA profile on your iPhone. That's already happening. Uh, it will intensify. You can research your own DNA profile, use the latest research stats in, onto your own profile to see if there are different risks evolving or not, or solutions. So we make the invisible visible again, and we allow for planned serendipity. Why? If you share your DNA with your partner, for example, your kids or your parents, they might detect a different solution or different research insight that might be very impactful on your life. That's co-created health. It's serendipity. So this morning, we saw some amazing talks. So thanks for that. By Jane, by Jonathan, by Thomas, by Ad Adele, by Ape. I talked about meaningful connections, cooperation, the value of it, the, 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 the value of feedback loops. Thomas, really important. About M health, about M learning. Guess what? If you combine all of these, you come here, the DNA-based economy, DNA, your own DNA profile as the ultimate way of personalization. Think about it, DNA-based education. Why? If I, I know my DNA profile, to a certain degree, and increasingly, I know my attitude for my learning styles, the way I learn, the way I can consume educational content and personalize it. Some others, it's already happening. It's not science fiction. People across the globe, startups, they personalize all those services based on your DNA. A lot of crap is involved, that's true, but there's also real evidence stuff happening, scientifically proven. Okay, almost there. Uh, five, huh? Okay. So, some more examples. Using your DNA for uh, personalized breast cancer, uh, tumor analysis. Right now, a lot of people uh, who have breast can cancer, they get a generic t treatment, but you should personalize it based on your, on your DNA profile or the, t the DNA of the tumor, tumor itself. That way, you save a lot of lives. Less side effects, more effectiveness. Really important. DNA matching. We all know social media. There are a lot of social media happening in dating sites already using your DNA profile for personalization and matching. Yeah. It's scary, but it's happening years before. Gene partner, same story. Matching on DNA. <laughs> Testing your, um, your parenting uh, match, council. So right now you can already see, uh, see your prediction or <coughs> disease risks for more than 100 diseases using only one DNA test as parents before you get conceive a child. Social media, DNA as the basis for social media, gene tree. Imagine Facebook or gene book, gene tree as a replacement of Facebook. It might become rea reality. Using your personal DNA profile to customize your sport regime or training schedule. If you look at your DNA, you can see your aptitude for injuries. So you can customize your schedule on your DNA already. Finally, then I'm finishing off, bringing it all together, all the lines uh, I started out at, at the end or at the, at the beginning of my talk. Right now, I'm working with MIT and Harvard on a stealth startup. It's uh, probably going to be a big impact on the world. We will launch um, um, yeah, different mobile DNA tests for different diseases like HIV, malaria, tuberculosis, uh, different cancer forms. We start with HIV this year. Uh, it's based on a revolutionary technology, all singularity, of course, combination of nanotech, biotech, uh, cloud computing, mobile physics. And it's a solution that's 100 times better, cheaper, and faster than all the competitors right now. 
that's the PCR and, and, and the antibodies and the, and the microfluids. So it will change the world because right now it's possible that you can help uh, a, a kid or a person in Africa doing an HIV test in one hour for only two bucks a person. That's revolutionary. That will save a lot of lives. And we will extend this platform with all of you guys, hopefully. So if you, if you want to participate or partner with us or fund us, whatever, you are welcome to, to, uh, to talk to me. And we, maybe we can exchange, exchange ideas. We can exchange this platform beyond health, also for water purification, food analysis, terrorism, detecting uh, particular chemicals. So in short, DNA. It saves lives, reduces costs, that's a fact. Personalized medicine going forward, it's necessary, we cannot avoid it. It enriches lives, connects lives, think of social media and dating. But most importantly, we have an amazing responsibility, all of you here as well, because we, we will go beyond mobile and this will be become mobile, because everything will become mobile. So we have to ask the questions that are most important about the ethics, the legal, the social, the cultural, ecological, psychological. All those impacts of DNA must be opened up in the public and also within us, within our group, uh, uh, within MLOVE, in my view. I hope that really. So back again, serendipity, vulnerability, DNA, be the change you want to, want to see in the world, mobile DNA testing, it will take a long time, but it's happening. It's ex exponential. And it's probably very well known by the audience here. Most are German. One of the best or probably well-known uh, uh, Germans from the last uh, 200, 300 years is Goethe. He said, everything basically that you make explicit opens up a new organ within yourself and the world and the other way around. So it will enrich our lives. Thank you very much.